I just made the walk from the Viking over the bathroom to change to go in the tent, and the wind today is so strong and so cold. Tomorrow is the official start of spring, but it does not feel like it. But we do have the Annapolis Spring Boat Shows coming up. Some men are really looking forward to that, uh, which gets us onto the topic of finishes. And let's continue that conversation inside the tent. Okay, now you're just following us. We are. Come on. Yes. For anybody who says our toilet is too small. All right, all suited up now in work clothes, ready to go to the tent and just do the continuous job of sanding, which we have spared you of the past couple weeks. And this week we do have some more different and hopefully exciting projects to kind of get to again. Um, but as we go into the tent, let us explain why we are spending so much time on this fairing and sanding process. It may look deceptively warm outside right now, but it is not. This is one of the coldest days we've had in about two or three weeks. So I'm actually really looking forward to getting into my Tyvek suit and down into the guest hall where we're working. We've got it tarped off a little bit, got the heaters running down there, keeping it a nice, comfortable 70 degrees warm. Right now you can see Matt working on bulkhead six. And I know that we've been mentioning for video upon video that like, oh my gosh, we're almost done. I think we're gonna be able to prime this area in the next couple days. And then before we get to that stage, we just do like what we think is the last coat of dike on to look for low spots once we sand it off. And then of course there's a ton of blue left. Fill those in, sand it, dike it. The cycle continues. And that is because we are going for the best finish that we can achieve. So we're going to try and like knock out all of the evening and filling before we get the primer on. So once that does go on, just easy sand of the primer and then we can paint. All right. You did hear me momentarily mention the Annapolis boat shows coming up. The spring show, we're just about a month away from now. So hopefully we'll see a number of you there. But one of the reasons I talk about it too, and it ties into what we're doing at the moment and why we haven't been showing so many new things is because as soon as Matt gets into a boat show, if there is an HH on display, he runs over there and just spends all of his time admiring it. He is such a fan of their finish work. It's got to be the best production uh, catamaran finishes out there. They are top of the line. And so I think he is trying for us to bring that same work into our boat. Of course, we are amateurs and it's just the two of us working, but... I believe his hopes and mine too are to turn our home build kit as close as we can get it to its $1.5 million sister size ship. And I'm sure we're not going to achieve that, but we're going to get as close as we have the ability to because when it's all said and done again, this is gonna be our home. We are going to be in it 24 seven looking around and I think we'd be pretty upset with ourselves if we just rushed through a lot of these things to get it on the water. That's not what it's about for us. We have no end date in sight that we have to be done with cruising. So of course we're gonna put all the work into this boat we can. So that is why the fairing and all of that is still taking so long because we find a little imperfections maybe bigger. Again, we don't know. We're new to this. And we're kind of like, all right, let's give it a little bit more work. Let's make this look like a truly professional boat if we have the ability. So that's why the episodes have been a little bit shorter. Not showcasing as much is because we've been putting a ton of our effort into that, but hopefully that process will be behind us soon and we can get onto a lot more exciting things. But now I'm about to go on the boat and work on bilges. So something slightly different. Already starting out my morning pretty dusty, but I did just give the area a vacuum. If you remember, like two months ago, I was ready to do this project, but one of the little flanges that is going to hold the pump um, had broken off, so Matt needed to go back and put that back in. So I had a good deal of sanding done before. I think there's still some areas that need to be touched to be able to key the surface before I paint. So I'm going to fit myself in there again, kind of give the area a sand with some 40 grits and prep it for our bilge paint. Checking this area out a little more in depth right now to see what definitely still needs to be hit. And unfortunately, I think it's 
that corner there. I'm not sure how I'll get to it. And then a little bit along the seam there. Yeah, the rest of it still looks keyed, ready to sand. And just a few globs of fairing compound that made their way down here. I don't know if I can get a sander in that spot. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's broken too. Uh, okay. The sanders on the fritz. Time to find something else. Might be hand sanding this bad boy. Boo, another sander down the drain. Two months old. And our corded ones have tended to last one month. And I don't know if we have the receipt to return it for warranty, so that kind of sucks. And on to our next sanding tool. It's actually gonna be better for getting the corners. So yeah, hopefully I don't need to do like a lot of work down there, just kind of roughing it up a little bit, preparing it for village paint. And it doesn't need to look pretty. This is one part I do not care about as far as looks. in there but then I get to a point where the ventilators get in the way and I can't move my head so I'm kind of just standing blind which is a little dangerous considering there's some fragile pieces of fiberglass down there that need to stay in place. I know. going on outside. Let's go check it out. Warning. The following scenes contain images of boat destruction and may not be suitable for sailboat lovers. Power boaters, on the other hand, may take much joy. Viewer discretion is advised. In last week's video, you saw us take a trip up the Severn River to tow back a sailboat scheduled for demolition. Matt and I had some hopes that it could be our liveaboard home for the remainder of our build time, but once getting inside and finding it would need more than just a good cleaning to even make it habitable, we decided to stick with the pacemaker we currently own. Tucker looks like he's enjoying himself way too much doing this. If we had known there had been a lot of interest in this boat before its demolition, we probably would have tried to work with the marina to get it sold and out of the yard intact. 
Next time an opportunity like this comes up, we'll try to get the guys to have a flash sale. In addition to applying the bilge paint to the actual bilge in our guest hall, uh, right under where the holding tank is, I'm also going to be putting it right here where our water tank will eventually go and I'm also going to put it down below where Matt was working on the holding tank for our master head a few weeks ago. So I've got the areas sanded, vacuumed, and now I'm going to put a styrene wipe on there before I get ready to add the bilge paint. And then for the holding tank, because we use the straps to hold them in, I have gone through and put tape over them. So I think I can lift this section out enough to be able to paint behind it. Of course, those are just temporarily on there so that I can paint this wall and then I think the center here and then flip them over. And then kind of same thing here. They are just taped around the side um, so I can probably get the sections up around it, but then eventually they'll have to dry and then these will have to get flipped back over there. Right, I think I've got everything I need for the job. The space has been cleaned up, but needs to be brushed up once more because all of the paper towels from doing the styrene wipe have collected down there. Uh, we got our Total Boat Epoxy Build Paint. So you can see it's been used before. Rollers, mask, headlamp. And I think all I need right now is an extra cup of coffee because I am falling asleep on the job. Super tired today, I have no idea why, but mm, yeah, definitely need something to pet me up. To stop in a bed. Now rats can shine, jokers got civil lines. Sing songs in the wet rain. Walk ahead. Walk ahead. Now every new day is a new fire. I'm to my teeth, call me a liar. Building as you rip, someone show me someone living of desire. Got the first coat of the first area complete and that really has opened up the space. So now I'm about to go down below to the next one. I wish I had some light in there. And so I'm crawling back there. That's looking good. Oh my gosh, that stuff is strong. <laughs> okay, so again, first coats are going on today. I will have to climb back in there to try and do a second coat. So we'll have to see if it dries in time. What am I doing with this light? Um, it's like nearing the end of the day already right now, 5.30. So we'll have to see uh, once I get these areas and then the bilge on the other side done, if there's time to do a second coat. Because if I can't, then I have to go through and sand tomorrow. Not the worst thing in the world, but I may just end up making it a later night tonight. Since the shelf ends here and we have fared up to that point, I'm gonna have to double check with Matt because I can't remember exactly where the door goes. I mean, I would assume it's here, um, but I don't want to paint anything with this epoxy paint that's not supposed to be because once it's set, it is really hard to get off. So I will leave these areas green for the moment and then just continue down to our holding tank. The bilge paint we're putting in this area is epoxy based and mainly used for bilges, as the name implies, as well as lockers, storage spaces, and even bulkheads. Although it is one part, meaning it doesn't need a catalyst added, it still dries to a hard finish, which is unaffected by moisture, oils, and mildew. That makes it perfect for both of these areas where our water maker will be housed above and our holding tank will sit below.
It is now the next day, if you can't tell by our nice blackout transition. And just as I was getting ready to put that second coat on last night, I consulted with Matt and we read the instructions. Turns out it needs anywhere between like 12 to 16 hours to set uh, dependent on temperature before you can put on another coat. So I never even got to the build. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and sand with 220, what I did yesterday, and then I can get another coat on. Same process tomorrow. Slight change of plans. I'm actually going to attack the bilge on our guest side today. And instead of going directly for the bilge paint, we are going to do a barrier coat first using Total Boats Total Protect. There is a 15 minute induction time on that paint now that I have mixed the two parts. So that is the perfect amount of time for me to go use that 220 grit on the areas yesterday that I went through with the bilge paint. You cover us in shame and I take the blame Living by the rules to which high school blues walk ahead Induction time is over, so now it's time to fully cover myself because I know I will be getting paint on my head and uh, tucking into that build to get that first coat on there. Unfortunately, I can't do anything else for five more days because that is the amount of time it needs to like fully cure before I can do the build paint. Hey, telling us to stop in a bay. To stop in a bay. Wow, that is not fun and stretching my arms in areas that haven't been stretched in a long time. But before I get too far and get the area covered with the roller, I think I need to get a chip brush for some of those corners. So I'm gonna run and get that. But the good news is the rest of it is rolling on well. So once I can contort myself into that position, uh, as long as I can move my arm back and forth, everything is going smoothly. Since our bilge area is likely to see water, we made the decision to coat it first with a barrier coat. What we're using is also an epoxy-based universal primer, which can be used above and below the waterline. This will seal the fiberglass and keep any water from entering, which, if left unaddressed, could cause blister formation. Got two coats of the Total Protect Barrier Paint on there in the bilge. It is looking a nice, brilliant white. Uh, my shoulders hurt. I have bruises all over my back and shoulder blades. Thankfully, I don't have to touch the area for another five days. Matt, I just realized that this entire episode has no focus on you. Are there anything, huh. any words you'd like to say to the camera just to have something? <laughs> regrets. Full of regrets. <laughs> So over sanding. So over sanding, yeah. Um, realizing we probably could have taken that weight penalty and put vinyl liners on the hull sides here and saved ourselves a lot of work. But quite frankly, I mean, that isn't it. There's so much that you can't put liners on, steps, these bulkheads, all that kind of stuff that would have required the sanding anyway. So here we are. Um, day, what? 20,000 of sanding, something like that. I don't know. It is ridiculous how much we've had to do.